Now this is Breaker version 1. He's a communications officer for G.I. Joe. This is a straight arm version, which means that he does not swivel at the elbows like this figure does. This is Zap here. And those came out in 1983 when they uh, called it the swivel arm battle grip. Uh, it helped them to be able to hold their weapons uh, in a two with uh, both arms. And uh, it didn't really matter for Breaker because he didn't have a weapon. He came with a radio pack, the wire with the headset, and a helmet. Otherwise, he did not have a weapon, which I wish he would have had a weapon. Because uh, to me, I think in the military, you are a soldier first, and whatever your expertise is comes second. Like if you're a medic, you still have to be a combat soldier, to me anyway. You start out learning rifle training, I'm sure. Anyways, Breaker, he was one of the original figures released carded in the first series 1982 and like all the original 16 figures he was released with straight arms and got the swivel arm battle grip later on in 1983 now if you can see his on his torso in the back here it says 1982 hasbro made in hong kong now the other ones will say 82-83 Hasbro made in Hong Kong. That's how you can tell the difference. It's one of the difference if you don't know what you're looking for as far as a swivel arm goes. Um, but he did, he came with the helmet, which is a standard helmet for all of them. He's in this original kind of bluish color as uh, most of the figures had. Um, they used this head here, the bearded brown haired head which was shared with a few other figures. We'll come back to that. But he, he did have kind of the grayish blue green color for the uniform. He had these black straps going down the front on both sides and they went around to the back. And let me pop off this back pack. You can see they made the, uh, the Y pattern and they went all the way into his torso. He had uh, short sleeves, rolled up, regular flesh tone arms, one grenade, pretty simple figure. He had the large torso as opposed to the skinnier torso which was put on these other figures in uh, 83 and 84 and became standard. He's got pretty plain legs, just has one pocket on each side and that's color painted silver. And the silver will, over time, if you're not careful, it will wear off. Mine's still pretty good. There's a little bit of spots here and there where it's worn off. And uh, that's about all the detail you have. He has no knee pads or anything like that. Um, some black boots, not a whole lot of detail. Uh, it wasn't the greatest paint job I see underneath there. This one's done good, but it looks like he bloused his trousers like most of them but he does have the headset and the wire that connects to the backpack and that is missing or broken most of the time and they're he's not real hard to find you can still find some figures out there of him but uh, just to pay for that little wire you may pay a premium to find that in some cases standard helmet with the two holes on the side which clips on his headset to him, then the wire plugs in here and goes to the backpack there. And that's pretty much it for the figure breaker. Um, I do have his file card. And we'll take a look at that shortly. And here's a look at breaker's card when he came on. It's a pretty standard card with the logo on the front with the uh, the uh, blast in the background that just kind of I think it looks pretty good um, there is breaker and all his glory with his backpack that's a pretty good image of him and there were some other versions there's a there was also one that 
had a down in this portion had a big gold star with an offer for Cobra Commander, a mail away figure. And so that's another version if you collectors are looking for that you can look out for. Um, I to me uh, it doesn't matter I've got one of the cards I'm not real keen on having all the file cards I just really like the figures to be in good shape and nice and tight now we'll go over some of the file card information let's see somebody cut the uh, the flag points off the back of this one and no it wasn't me but we'll take a look at his file card so it says communications officer, code name Breaker, file name Alvin R. Kibbe, and it's got a serial number. His prim primary military specialty is infantry. His birthplace is Gatlinburg, Tennessee. His grade is E4. So I guess that's a corporal. So Breaker is familiar with all NATO and Warsaw Pact communication gear as well as most world export devices. Specialized Education, Signal School, Covert Electronics, Project Gamma, Qualified Expert M16, M1911A1, MAC-10 Ingram, Classified, Speaks Seven Languages. Then down at the bottom it says, He is efficient and self-assured and has an uncanny ability to turn adverse situations to his favor. And then on the bottom there, you have printed in Hong Kong, 1982 Hasbro Industries, Incorporated, Pawtucket, Rhode Island. The name Alvin R. Kibbe does not identify any known living person. But this kind of gave G.I. Joe some character behind us, something you could build from. To where, you know, if you were a child playing with this toy, you could really use your imagination and develop relationships between the figures by their names and specialties and I really like that about toys I, I wish they had more of them today to where kids could really get a little bit of realism and use their imagination and come up with their own stories and their own ways of play that uh, really helps out instead of a game or something else doing it for them but anyways, that's Breaker's file card, and there was a couple of different versions. Um, he was in the Sunbow cartoons, and most of them, uh, he was in and out of different various ones. I, I don't know all exactly which ones he was in. But I know he was in some of the first ones and some of the later ones also. Uh, he was in the Marvel Comics. He was in the very first ones. Uh, he was in also the Classified File, the Order of Battle, the Battle File, the IGI Game Card, the Action Card, the Impel Cards, which I showed on an earlier video, uh, the Coloring Book, the Pencil Sharpener, the Color Forms, the Electronics Command Center, Find Your Fate, battleground and he was in the commercials now we go back to the figure adjust this a little bit so you can see him there's breaker most of the 1982 series figures and their swivel arm counterparts reused the molds from each other and repainted slightly to make them seem more original now they shared a lot of parts with breaker with other figures now, Breaker's head and arms were reused for clutch and rock and roll. Uh, Breaker's torso was shared with Grunt, Hawk, Snake Eyes, and Stalker. And in 1983, Tan Grunt. And Breaker's waist piece was shared with 12 of the original 15 figures. Breaker's legs were shared with Clutch, Grunt, Hawk, Rock and Roll, Short Fuse, Stalker, Steeler, and Zap. And in 1983, a Tan Grunt and Tan Clutch in 1984. With the new version of Breaker, was uh, when when it was released in 1983, two major changes were made to his construction. The straight arms were replaced with arms that could swivel at the bicep, and that bulky waist piece was replaced by a slimmer one. Also, the date stamp on the figure was changed from 1982 to 82-83. 
Note that the figure's head only turns left and right. It does not allow the head to look up and down. And the heads only turn left and right until the swivel ball head that was introduced in 1984 in Series 4. Now he had four uh, international releases. Um, they were called different names, but I don't really care about the international figures that much. Um, just the American ones is what the ones I collect and the one I'm most interested in. So I will not be going over any of those. Um, he did have up to right now, I believe he has six other versions, including this one. Um, there was one in 1982 and 1983 with the swivel arm battle grip. Then he had 1997, that's version two. And then there was also a 2005 version three. And then 2008 was called Corporal Breaker, and that, they called that a version one. And then version four, Able Breaker, Shaz, from the movie in 2009. Now these figures originally cost three bucks. And nowadays they cost a lot more than that to get them, but I think they're more geared towards collectors than they are for kids. And that's kind of a shame. But uh, that is Breaker. And we're going to have a lot more figures to go through. I have quite a few. The last time I counted, and I'm still counting, I am over 400. <laughs> so uh, we'll get to your favorites at some point. Um, my favorite G.I. Joe out of the original 13 is Rock and Roll. And I just remember playing with him a lot um, as I was when I was a kid. And um, mostly it's because I had children and they were playing with them. I'm a lot older than uh, I was. I was uh, too old for these toys by 1980. I was kind of done with them. I started out originally with the 1964 versions, G.I. Joe, the 12 inch figures. But I had kids of my own, and in the early 80s, when these came out, I started collecting them with my kids. And uh, they really enjoyed them. And rock and roll was just my favorite, because I'm a guitar player, I guess, and I kind of relate to them a little bit. But uh, Breaker didn't get a whole lot of love uh, from, the, uh, from the comics. They kind of treated him like he was... I don't know, they just kind of treated him like he was kind of uh, ignorant, which in some situations he was, but for a communi communications expert, they didn't give him a whole lot of love. But uh, that is Breaker, the straight arm version from 1982. And uh, make sure that you subscribe, hit the subscribe button, hit the like or dislike, and we hope to see you again here on G.I. Joe Immortal. And thank you for watching. We'll see you again next time.